It's gonna be like a creepy painting or something. It's gonna be a naked painting. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show this on YouTube. Hey everybody, this is Reapy Ron, and today we're gonna be playing a game called Grotesque Beauty. Uh, this is a demo, and I don't really know what this game is about, but it had an interesting sounding title. That's the only reason why I got this. So let's get in and see what this is about. Who's calling me? Is it Bigfoot? I told him I don't have his money. Oh, it's Rachel. Hello? Anita? I think? Anita? Okay. Rachel, are you still coming over tonight? Uh, yes, I'm on my way. I should be there soon. That's a relief. I was afraid you might bail. No way. I'm not going to leave you hanging all by yourself. Sit tight. I'll... Uh, I'm not far from yours. Okay. Thanks, I really appreciate you doing this. See you soon. Anita Reynolds, you were always such a scaredy cat. Okay. Anita's apartment is a 20 minute walk from my place. Most nights she's home alone as both her parents work late. I would have thought she'd be used to it by now, but lately she's been afraid of being by herself, even in her own home. That is why we decided I should come over and keep her company. It'll be like a slumber party, one we used to have as kids. Even though we've long overgrown sleepovers, secretly a part of me is looking forward to it. It'll be, it'll be nice to be back to those times when things were much simpler. Any excuse to do silly things like stay up crazy late, watch a scary movie, and stuff your face full of sugary snacks. <laughs> Uh, this could be a chance for both of us to relax. God knows I need something to distract me at this time of year. Why? Before I realized it, I was already at her door. This neighborhood is so quiet, you'd think nobody lives here. I ponder how best to make my presence known. Knock on the door like a normal person. <laughs> I step up to the door and knock twice. Knock, knock. Coming, coming. Oh, hi, Anita. You look interesting. Rachel, you made it. I'm so, uh, I'm so glad you came. Did you wait long? Of course, you're fashionably late as usual. Uh, joke about it. You know I'm worth the wait. As the one who's always doing the waiting, I'd have to disagree. Right. Now you're the one keeping me waiting. It's freezing out here. Are you going to let me in or not? Uh, if you're cold, it serves you right. Consider it payback for your tardiness. I knew you were evil. I knew it. Anita was evil this whole time. She was a super villain and I, I was aware of that. Uh, man, it's been so long since I last visited. Uh, I almost feel nostalgic. You should drop by more often then. My parents have been working late more and more these days, so you definitely stay over some more. Okay. It's almost like a setup to some corny romantic movie. Your parents are away, you're all alone, and you have the perfect excuse to invite this cute girl over. Okay. Cute girl, where? I don't see any. Hey, don't hate. Appreciate you know I'm a real catch. Is that so? Then how come you haven't gotten yourself a boyfriend yet? Ouch, that's a low blow. Seriously though, thank you for coming over. I feel more at ease having you around. I've been feeling out of sorts these last few days. Eh, it's not a problem. It's alright, we're friends after all. It's the least I can do. A friend is... A friend in need is a friend indeed and all that. Thanks, it's good to know who you can count on when it really matters. Yes. <laughs> so, what's been bothering you? Bad dreams and the like? Something like that, I guess. I don't know. It's hard to describe. I've been having this bad feeling every night for about a week. It's more like I've been feeling like something has been watching me. You say something has been watching you, not someone. What do you mean? Like I said, it's hard to explain, but I've been feeling this each night when I wake up, or when I walk home. I, I can't read. <laughs> it's been like this ever since the fog came. Have you noticed the mist on your way here? Yeah, it's kind of creepy. I can see why you 
you'd hate that, having to walk through that every night by yourself. It's been there for about a week now. It's isolated to just this street and nowhere else. Don't you think that's odd? It makes going outside even eerier to be unable to see what's lurking around me. <laughs> Anita looks pretty stressed out at the moment. Is that why you feel eyes watching you because you can't see what's out there? Probably, but the feeling doesn't go away even when I make it home. It follows me inside. Even now, I still feel a bit paranoid. What are you saying? Something is watching you through the walls? I don't know. I don't have an answer. It just gives me the creeps. I knew Anita for a long time. We grew up through primary school together, and she's always been easy to startle. This time is different. She seems genuinely afraid that something bad could happen. It's enough to put me slightly on edge too, but I have to be strong for her sake. There's more you know. Huh? Did you know there's been a few reported disappearances from this neighborhood lately? Seriously? I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, now she looks distressed. Go on, Rachel, pull it together. Yeah, seven people have been declared missing. There's been no trace of them, no clue as to what happened. They just vanished. A handful of strangers with no connection to one another. The police had no leads, so they couldn't rule out that they each ran away on their own. But for so many of them to just disappear in such a short space of time is too uh, coincidental. All of this just makes me so uncomfortable. Aren't your parents worried to leave you alone knowing people have been going missing? No one seems to think it's serious. The problem is that there's just no evidence of anything bad happening to them. But the fact that there's been no trace of them worries me even more. Who runs away without taking any of their belongings? It's so unusual. How can no one, not even their family, do nothing about it and not lose their mind? What if something is really wrong? Could they live with themselves if they never find the missing person again? I remain silent, feeling somber all of a sudden. My gaze dropped down to the floor. Things have just turned to a touchy subject. An awkward moment lingered between us. The space was palpable. <laughs> what? What's up now? Oh, Rachel, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so insensitive. I was just running my mouth without thinking and I forgot. It's, it's okay. It's a long time ago. I should have gotten over it by now. Or at least it shouldn't uh, get me bad anymore. Rachel. It's just this time of year, this was around the time she disappeared. Normally I don't think about it anymore. After all this time, I learned to forget she's missing. Not really though. You have to let go a little or it can eat you up. But during this time of the year, it all comes rushing back and I remember too much. My sister is gone. I may never see her again. It suddenly hit me in one go and I get all emotional and I feel guilty about it. Cause all I'm thinking about is how I feel. Like how I never got any closure, never got to say goodbye to her. My last memory of her was so mundane it was just another normal day. If I knew that was our final meeting together, I would have cherished the moment, cherished the sight of her, and let her know how much I miss her. But it's such a selfish wish. She could be scared or hurt, and I'm upset about how I feel. You can't blame yourself, Rachel. Sorry, I came over here to make you feel better. I didn't mean to get all melodramatic on you. We weren't meant to avoid this topic. It was one of the reasons I was looking forward to the sleepover. Winter nights bring back terrible memories and I needed something to distract me. This slumber party is as much benefit for me as it is for Anita. Two lonely souls united in our distress. I'm sorry as well for opening up old wounds. Some late friend I've been, or some late, lame friend. Uh, d yeah, don't worry about it. Let's just change the subject. Listen to us. We've just launched straight into catching up. We haven't settled down yet. We need to change the pace. When's the house tour going to start? 
Oh yeah, let's do that. I haven't even offered you anything to drink yet. Do you want something from the kitchen? Uh, I thought you'd never ask. Give me a, a bourbon on the rocks. I followed Anita into the living room. She was doing a comical impression of an estate agent showing me around even though I've been here before. So what are you having? I have orange juice, tea, and if you're really adventurous, I have vodka. Uh, mix them all together. <laughs> I'm feeling extra adventurous. Uh, I'll just go with some orange juice. That sounds pretty good. Juice would be great. Seriously, how old are you? <laughs> Can't ever be too old for some classic OJ. Plus, I plan on mixing it with the vodka later, so yeah, don't worry. And <laughs> you're the one who offered them in the first place. With our drinks in hand, I take in the surroundings for the first time. Not a lot of not a lot has changed in the two years I've been absent. Everything is just as I remember it to be, except for one addition. Oh, that's new. Is it going to be like a creepy painting or something? It's going to be a naked painting. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show this on YouTube. I don't know how I've only just noticed it. Right in the middle of the room is a large painting that dominates the wall. It, yeah, it has a, yeah, I think, this painting. Oh yeah, we got it from an art auction at some weird, or at this weird place. Dad's been obsessed about it. He couldn't take his eyes off it ever since we got it. Uh, okay. What do you think? Are you a fan? Um. It, sure, it's a nice painting. I like it, it's nice. The draftsmanship is... Draftsmanship? Come on, you can be honest. Tell me what you really think. No, really, I'm not just saying that. It's really nice. Well, I think it's horrible. From the moment I first saw it, I was unsettled by it. I have no idea what my dad saw in this painting. A naked lady. Probably. <laughs> he was so enamored by it, he bought it, this thing on the spot. Uh, do your family go to art auctions regularly? Not really, but both my parents love art and we came across this interesting place that was selling paintings one night. So we only went in out of curiosity. To tell you the truth though, it was a strange experience. Are we gonna go see that experience now? Looks that way. Okay, the auction house was massive, far bigger than what I was expecting looking in from the outside. The lighting was dim and there was a light haze and there was a light haze surrounding the place all the guests must have been smokers or something because there was a thin haze in the room there was a lot of paintings hanging on the wall as you'd expect my parents were in their element and we split off to look around at our own leisure nothing particularly grabbed me until I saw this one painting which one painting would that be the one we just saw, or a different one? Oh, it's the same one, okay. Let me guess, it's the one we're looking at right now. That's right, Sherlock. One week ago, I was standing face to face with this beautiful lady in the painting. Although I thought it was captivating, there was something about it that didn't sit right with me. Maybe it's the scar across her chest. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, because I might just black bar it, and you might not be able to see it too well, but... <laughs> Who knows? It just looks like a... Like a caterpillar across her chest. You and your bad feelings. Uh, do you ever not have them? Hey, I'm serious. The painting puzzled me. It stirred up something in me, and not necessarily in a good way. I stood there for a long time just staring at the painting, trying to work out what was triggering my senses. That was when this weirdo crept up on me. <laughs> Okay, who was the weirdo? Was it me? Was I at that art auction? Eh, no, not quite. It doesn't quite look like me. I see that this painting has uh, captured your attention, young miss. Yeah, I guess it has. What's the background on this piece? Do you know who the artist is? I don't see a plaque for it anywhere. The origin of this piece is not known, I'm afraid. It's such a beautiful painting shrouded in mystery, like the Volniche manuscript. It adds to the eerie 
sensation one feels in its presence. You can find yourself easily lost within this canvas, the serene landscape it depicts, the detailed faces hidden in the background, and the angelic figure in the center of it all. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, I guess. I am eager to know what this scene is about. We can only speculate, but that is part of its charm, the identity of the maiden, how she found herself to be in such a bizarre land. Tell me, what do you think her expression is showing? How do you interpret her manner? Um, she looks seductive, I guess? Sure. She is indeed desirable, her radiant confidence, and the viewer can't help but be drawn in by her. How is it possible for an artist to render a figure that inspires such feelings? It's quite unreal. She's like a ve she's like Venus standing in a strange new world unseen by human eyes. I got more of an Aphrodite feel, but okay. This moment is forever captured in the still image, a timeless state, perfection. For the pleasure of all <laughs> the pleasure, the pleasure of all those who look upon her for generations upon generations to come. When you stare into the painting, do you see anything staring back? Uh, what did you just say? Anita, there you are. Uh, okay, I guess that's Anita's dad. Wow, this painting, it's gorgeous. What a find. Anita, don't you think that this is an extraordinary painting? In some way it is. How precious. What is the name of this artwork? Oh, creepy guys is showing up again. It did not come with a name. When it came into our possession, however, we have given it one that we thought was quite apt. Grotesque beauty. It perfectly embodies the sinister tone that's mixed with the odd, soothing nature of the piece. A scene that conjures so much conflicting emotions surely not be named anything else. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Grotesque beauty! Grotesque beauty! Yes, it does suit the painting. I can't seem to take my eyes off it. The woman in painting, she's just so perfect. She almost feels real. The artist must have been a genius to have created something like or so lifelike. Jeez, look at me. I, I'm all shaken up. <laughs> I'm sweating profusely. How much is this piece? You haven't sold it already, have you? Grotesque beauty has not been sold yet, sir. You have the first re uh, refusal right now. If you are to be the new owner, you can take her home with you tonight. <laughs> what luck! So early into the auction and I find a masterpiece straight away? How much is it? I'll buy it off of you right now! Name your price. I'll give you anything. <laughs> Good sir, I see in your eyes the desire of a true lover of art. I believe you are the perfect one to take away this treasure. For that reason, it is yours free of charge. Oh my god, are you real? I can't believe this. This is too good to be true. Haha, <laughs> I never thought my night could turn out like this. Uh, Dad, are you sure you want to? Are you sure about this? Where would you put that thing? <laughs> Don't you think it'll look a little bit out of place in our home? A neat idea. A gym like this doesn't come by so often. It's too good to pass up. Besides, any man would be happy to find a home for this work of art. We have it. We have to have it. Before you commit through, I must offer you one final chance to turn away. You can leave this painting and go back to your normal life, or you can choose to willingly take the painting with you, give it a new home, and let it grow as a part of your life. So what will it be? I'll take it! Congratulations, sir. You are the new owner of Grotesque Beauty. Your life will never be the same again. <laughs> That's probably not a good thing. What a freaky story. That guy from the auction house sounds like a such a weirdo. He totally was. The way he was acting didn't seem normal. He really was a creep. I don't ever want to see that uh, ugly mug of his again. 
Uh, when did you say this happened? About a week ago, why do you ask? I was just thinking that the timing of all of this is pretty odd. What do you mean? Well, all these bad feelings you've been experiencing lately? You said it started about a week ago, around the same time this painting came into your home. Don't you think that's quite a coincidence? It could be. I don't see how those two relate to one another, though. <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of fog where it was there. You you have fog in your around your street now. Pretty sure this painting is cursed. We have to burn it. And the fog that just appeared, it coincides with these events. This might just be me. But does that look like wisps of smoke in the painting? They can even be from a fog much like the one that's recently hit the streets. What if the painting brought the fog to this neighborhood? And the stranger from the auction house was something straight out of a horror story. I don't know. Maybe there's something weird about this. Now you're beginning to sound crazy. Or are you just trying to scare me? I'm just saying. This thing does give me the creeps too. I see why you've been scared these last few days. I reckon you'd feel better if we took it off the wall and put it away. No way. Dad loves that painting. He'd kill me if he finds out we've been handling it badly. At that moment, there was a knock at the door. <laughs> somebody said heart attack. <laughs> Who is that? Were you expecting somebody? No, I only invited you here. Yeah, let's go see who it is. It's probably going to be creepy art auction guy. Or eccentric dad. Hello? Who is it? Hello? Is somebody there? No one is answering. Now what? Should we open the door and see if anybody is nearby? I don't know. I, I don't really want to. <laughs> Me neither. But then again, I'm... Not sure if I'll be able to sleep not knowing what was out there. I think I can hear somebody there still. Why won't he answer? Hey, what do you want? Still nothing. We could latch the door chain and take a look. What do you think? I don't know. I'm conflicted. What do you think we should do? Yeah, let's answer the door. What's the worst that could happen? We're the main characters. We're not going to die this early. Plus, this is just a demo. Unless we do die and then switch characters to the weird art guy. Let's see who it is. At last, we'll solve one mystery tonight. Okay, let's do it. Alright, you ready? Not really. With the door unlatched, I open the door a little and take a peek through the gap. It's gonna be a weird auction art guy, huh? Well, who is it? <laughs> you, you take a peek through the door, you walked right through it. This can't be right. There's no one there. We both heard the knock, right? We couldn't have both imagined that. This gives me the creeps. Come back inside. Let's just leave it alone. Hang on, I want to make sure whoever it was isn't hiding around the corner somewhere. There goes my plan to stay up late and watch a spooky film. Let's head back inside. We tried to brush off the incident at the door and stayed up a little longer, idly chatting before the night grew dark and sleep was washing over us. This slumber party was still pleasant despite our paranoia. Anita was probably feeling overcautious and afraid, having heard one too many morbid stories. I was glad to be there with her to keep my wandering mind from thinking back to my sister's disappearance. Soon all of this anxiety will pass. It's good that we can help each other through it. Yeah, that's, that's nice of you guys. Tonight was a bit weird. It was about to get weirder still. <laughs> I would expect nothing less than a game called Grotesque Beauty. Created by Ben Hill. Oh, dang it, that was the whole demo. You reached the end of the demo. A complete version uh, is in the production and more choices, branching paths, and multiple endings. Keep up to date by following the Twitter. Okay. Okay, well, this was Grotesque Beauty, the demo. Um, this game was kind of cool. I, I kind of like playing these uh, visual novel type of games or choose your own story type of games every once in a while. The main problem is I know I have to edit them a lot because I usually like pause and then do another take of the read if I screw it up. So if you're wondering why there's like so many like kind of jumps in it, I usually do my best to kind of cover them up. But if you get catching those in these type of games, that's the reason why. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys would like to play this game, I'll be sure to put a link down in the description where you guys can go off and download this. 
And if you haven't already, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with any friends, family, anybody that you think might like this kind of video. Um, it really does help me out quite a bit, and I'm very appreciative to anybody who does that. And if you guys have been having a good day, keep on having a good day. If you guys have been having a bad day, well, I hope this video made your day just a little bit better. I'll have to see all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool, and bye.